To be a rail fan in the mid-50s and to live in or near Chicago was a double-barreled dream. There was almost no end to the majestic views of railroading. There were exotic first-generation diesels, sparkling consists of the new streamlined passenger trains, well-maintained track work, and almost constant train activity to be photographed and enjoyed. The views from the few downtown skyscrapers gave an appearance of myriads of track running off in almost as many directions. And the view from the ground proved that there was engineering imagination to weave those various tracks through and across each other. Even the Chicago Transit Authority's tracks took on magical aspects in the evening light. The Chicago skyline of yesterday has dramatically changed. And so has train activity, since some passenger stations of the 50s no longer exist. And passenger activity could keep a rail fan and photographer busy all day long. This Gulf, Mobile, and Ohio train, the Ann Rutledge, was a prime example of passenger train activity. Here the train crosses the Chicago River on its run to St. Louis. And before the GM and O train leaves the scene, Illinois Central's train number four, the Louisiane, arrives from Memphis. And soon we see the cars for the Chicago and Eastern Illinois Florida Streamliner, the Dixie Flyer, backing into the Dearborn Street Station, with the Chicago and Western Indiana Alco RS1 switcher making the move. On the adjacent track, a string of Grand Trunk Western cars behind another C and WI switcher comes out of Dearborn Station. With Grand Trunk 6330 on the point, GTW's train number 15 arrives from Montreal and Toronto. Just viewing the passenger switching activity could get one all fired up for the vast amount of railroading in this great metropolis. Santa Fe's train number 16, the Texas Chief, next pulls into town. Three Alco PA passenger units head the front end. They have recently been repowered with electromotive diesel engines. The EMD instrument test car following the lead unit indicates the possibility of the first trial runs for this repowered trio. Passenger train maintenance and outward cleaning was of prime consideration for most railroads in the 50s. The GTW engine we saw earlier now heads back out for service. 
Emery Goulage spent some more delightful time capturing the cleaning and engine servicing activities of the Santa Fe.